Welcome to the Fireside Chat for Fitness and Nutrition with Adrian and Ken. Today we're going to be talking about how alcohol affects both our workouts and things like weight loss, sleep, etc. Let's start with the fitness part though. Ken, how does alcohol affect our workouts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good question. So let's let's uh, let's talk about what is moderate amounts of ex- of alcohol and you know, should you be drinking? I'll, I'll go into what how it affects your your body. Uh, Ken, we're going to have to start over again. I don't think we're side by side. I'm side by side. Oh my gosh. Is it me? Oh, it might just be me. Sorry. Uh, Gallery view, speaker view. Gallery view. All right. Sorry. Um, I thought it was recording that way and I was like, oh my gosh. All right. Start again. (laughs) Welcome to the Fireside Chat for Fitness and Nutrition with Adrian and Ken. Today, we're going to be talking about alcohol how it affects our workouts and also how it affects things like our sleep and our hormones and lots of different things like that. But first, let's talk about the fitness aspect. Ken, how does alcohol affect our workouts? Uh, that's a good question, Adrian. Let me let me uh, let's start with how much is should a person drink? And really, you know, alcohol is a poison. You know, it, it affects us negatively. So you really shouldn't drink it at all. But that, that's that's my you know personal opinion. And if and if uh, um, you know, you want to be physically fit, alcohol is detrimental to that. And we'll go over the reasons why that is. But um, the, the, there's drinking every once in a while for special occasions. There's moderate amounts of drinking. And then there's binge drinking or, you know, heavy drinking. So the, uh, the government has stated that moderate amounts of, of alcohol is stated as one drink per day per, per a woman and two drinks Per day for a man and a drink constitutes 12 ounces of beer or five ounces of wine or 1.5 ounces of uh, whiskey or you know liquor and you um you can't save up your drinks <laughs> so <laughs> if you if you didn't I, I didn't drink all this week so i'm gonna go ahead and drink save up all my drinks all 14 drinks or if you're a man or seven drinks for a woman to, for Friday night. You, you can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Um, it's called binge drinking, and that's described as uh, four drinks for a woman or five drinks for a man in a two-hour period, and that's not really not good for you. So now that we know what what moderate amounts of drinking is and uh, and binge drinking, let's talk about how moderate amount of, of alcohol affects your, your workouts. So alcohol is a diuretic for for number one, number one, it, it uh, make, increases the amount of urine and can cause you to be dehydrated. And what that does is it, it affects your intensity of your workout. If you're not as, uh, if you're dehydrated, your body can't work as effectively as it can when it's full, you know, full of water. Because we are just bags of water, basically. And 70% of our bodies are water. And if, if we if we're used to being efficient with a certain level, if we're below that, it creates a problem. So that's the that's number one. And number two, recovery. So uh, uh, alcohol affects the protein synthesis. And, and I know we've talked about, Adrian, before that it's not the actual um, exercise that weights the strength training that, that makes you stronger. It's the recovery in between. It's the sleep and the, and the, and the, the time that's spent off that allows your muscles to say, hey, I'm going to be able to make myself stronger the protein is taken into the muscles and makes them stronger so that they say, I'm going to be able to do this next time. They don't actually say that, but the muscles, <laughs> they don't have a voice, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, so so um, uh, alcohol affects that protein synthesis. So it doesn't, if you if you want to build muscle, if you want to be um, stronger, uh, if you want to be high, if you want to build a little bit of muscle mass, um, alcohol inhibits that. So you, you want to kind of stay away from that if you want, if you want to, you know, most efficient workouts that you can get. Uh, and also, I think we, you know, you kind of hit on it, it affects the quality of sleep. Now, you know, I, when I drink every once in a while, I fall asleep just, just like that, I, I fall, but it affects the quality of sleep. You don't get in the REM, the, the rapid eye movement of sleep, which affects your mood and your um, uh, um, energy level. And that can affect your motivation. So if you don't get enough sleep or the good quality of sleep, you know, that's going to affect your workouts as well. So you want, that's another reason to kind of stay away from it. If, you, if you're serious about fitness and you want to be 
um, you know, alcohol is, 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 is not good. It affects your motor skills. So if you're, if you're drinking, if you have alcohol in your, if you're in your bloodstream while you're exercising, it can affect your motor skills, your balance, and that can cause injury. So you want to kind of, there's another reason why you don't want to, you know, you're, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be up here and I'm going to do a deadlift or so. And, 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 or I'm going to do something with balance on one leg or so, you know, you could fall and hurt yourself. So, so don't, uh, there's another reason. Now, cardiovascularly, um, it affects you in, in kind of already touched on this in that, uh, if you're dehydrated, you, your body can't work as efficiently as uh, it can if it's hydrated and um, doing cardiovascular because you sweat a lot already um, when you're doing when you're doing you you can sweat a lot when you're doing um, um, cardiovascular that's gonna that's gonna uh, cause you to lose even more um, more uh, water so it's it it just makes it harder for you to do cardio and uh, uh, so there's another reason and then the, the last thing is we I, again I've already touched on this sort of it's motivation so if you're you don't get enough sleep if you're dehydrated it's going to affect your mood it's going to affect your your um uh your intensity your motivation to work out and you, you may not even work out so i'm gonna i don't feel good i have a hangover today i'm going to skip today's workout you know well, that's not going to be beneficial for your overall in the long term because you know what i'm all about consistency and you can't be consistent if you if you have, if you're not motivated if you're tired if you're you know if you're uh, you know things those things of that nature so so anyway that's what i've got adrian um what have you got as far as uh, well, i thought alcohol? that was very interesting to talk about how alcohol affects the muscle synthesis because that's not something that most people even think about um it does. It, yeah and it does really impact motivation and the quality of our workouts i just even imagine like going to yoga class after having a night of a, a few glasses of wine maybe those balancing poses are going to be a lot harder than would be. <laughs> <laughs> it would, yeah, it can be. And I like, you know, and we'll talk about more about alcohol's effect is more than just like the pleasant buzz that everybody's going for. And I must admit, I'm more of a kinesthetic learner. I was uh, at a bar actually reading about how alcohol is processed by the liver. So like, I was there drinking and learning at the same Excellent. time. Excellent. <laughs> that's well, you're multitasking. Exactly. Excellent. Um, but yeah, so, but and now as a registered dietitian nutritionist, I do think it's important for people to understand just how alcohol really is a poison and it can have impact our weight, our energy levels, our sleep and our hormones, which you touched on a little bit of the, um, the energy levels and sleep. Definitely want to pay attention for that though, because a lot of times people are not sleeping very well. Well, let's talk about weight first. So Alcohol is actually pretty calorie dense. It provides seven calories per gram, which is almost as much as fat, which provides nine calories per gram. And consuming alcohol, especially in excess, you know, like the binge drinking that you mentioned, can contribute to weight gain. Mm -hmm. It can also lower inhibitions and lead to overeating, you know. So mm -hmm. maybe thinking about going to Taco Bell at 2 a.m. is like a good thing. And I feel like I'm talking to my past self right now, but it is. Right. <laughs> oh, I know. I hear you. <laughs> and it does further impact weight management. So if that's something that you're working on, maybe don't have so much alcohol because it does open those floodgates and we're like, oh, euros and candies and all that stuff. It will add up. The other thing that you started touching on was uh, energy. And it is a diuretic. Alcohol is a diuretic and it will leave us feeling dehydrated. And when we are dehydrated, we aren't thinking clearly. We don't have energy for things. So the other thing to consider is that when we have excess alcohol over time, it can lead to nutrient deficiencies. And that can also affect our energy levels and just our overall well-being. So again, it's a toxin. We don't want to have too much of it. We're not like trying to bring back prohibition or anything. We're just letting you know it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that sleep. Uh, a lot of times people would say like, oh, just a little bit of wine, you know, knocks me out. Or I like to have a bourbon before sleep. It really helps me. And it does. It does help you initially maybe get to sleep. But as you mentioned, the quality of sleep and the um, interruption of REM really is crucial um, for restorative rest. And you're not getting that if it's being interrupted. Yeah. And then you feel tired and groggy the next day. And the idea of a run does not probably sound very appealing, does it? Right. <laughs> sure. And then the other part is hormones. So alcohol does disrupt the balance of hormones in our body. And drinking alcohol chronically 
lead to increased cortisol levels, which is the body's primary stress hormone, and that can contribute to weight gain. And especially that, that spare tire, that muffin top that we're all basically trying to avoid. It can also disrupt the production of other hormones involved in metabolism and appetite regulation. Again, making us think that going to a fast food restaurant at 2 a.m. is a really good idea. What do we do about this? Because, you know, most people are going to drink in some amount, some of the time. You mentioned how many drinks to have uh, per week, per day, for women and men. That was awesome. And also, I just like to mention that when you are going to drink, try to have the lower calorie, lower sugar option. So this might be like a light beer instead of an IPA, which has more calories in it. Um, also, maybe a wine spritzer and avoid mixing alcohol with things like soda or uh, sugary mix mixers in general. And that can help us maintain some semblance of balance and also just, you know, do less damage to our bodies when we do decide to imbibe. Um, any questions that you have, Ken? Yeah, I heard once, tell me if this is a, a good way to do it as well. Like and for every drink you have, have a glass of water in between the drink. Is that that? I should have mentioned that. Yeah, that's one of, <laughs> that's one of the things that I like to mention, especially if you're gonna have multiple or you're like out at night. Yeah. Try to remember to have a glass of water to just hydrate yourself a little bit and make yeah. the hangover the next day not as bad. Uh, really good idea just to put some of that water back into the body. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Good. No, I, you, I, you covered very good, very good uh, coverage of everything. Hormones. I like that. Yeah. So I hopefully, I mean, we don't want to be sticks in the mud here, but <laughs> for anybody listening, if you're thinking, okay, maybe I want to be smarter about the things I drink, drink less. Hopefully these give you some good ideas and reasons behind why you might want to make that change. And as we always say, you know, just try to, you know, make good choices. What's the word, Ken? <laughs> Consistency. <laughs> Consistency. <laughs> and I would say, you know, just choose one thing that we talked about. And if you are going to keep the same level, same amount of drinks going, but you've been having, let's say, vodka with Sprite, maybe switch it to a vodka with lemon and a tonic. I mean, you can just make a little tweak and that will still add up in the long term. That's a great idea. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs> no, that's a great idea. I like that. And if you guys have any questions about today's episode, please make a comment below. Or if you have any ideas for topics we haven't covered yet, um, please also um, check below and write to us. There's also, um, you can like and subscribe if you want to keep getting notifications from us. Anything else that we're missing? I think, I think that's all. I right. don't think so. I think we covered everything. I think, yeah. Well, all right. Well, we'll see you all next week. Enjoy and stay Bye. hydrated. <laughs> yeah. We have a 90 day VIP program, and this is all about knee surgery prep and recovery. So we want to make sure that you have the best outcomes by having your own virtual personal trainer and your own dietitian nutritionist uh, who's going to help coach you. So by integrating these services that we're going to offer with your doctor's care, you will have a lot of potential benefits including customized diet and exercise plans to help you get ready for the surgery. And then afterwards, the surgery, dealing with things like inflammation or um, limited mobility and how to get that strength back into the knee, for example, uh, and the muscles surrounding it. We can also help create routines that focus on strengthening certain uh, specific muscles. Like I said, reducing inflammation and excess weight to help your knees not be so stressed out. And we're also going to improve flexibility and enhance your overall health. What else are we going to do, Ken? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. You said a lot. That's good. Injury prevention and rehabilitation for sure. Uh, um, you know, if you're getting scheduled for a knee replacement, let's just say, uh, um, you want to strengthen those, those muscles around the joint um, uh, so that it's easier for you to recover. So the stronger the muscle is before you go in, the easier it is to rehabilitate that because it's already programmed. It's already programmed in the muscle and the nerves and so forth. So it's uh, um, it's a good it's a good thing. You want that. Your muscles want that. They desire that, and, and you'll the rehabilitation will be so much easier. And uh, <clears throat> with a with a, a trainer specifically, you know, um, we can guide you. I can guide you through. Uh, the proper form and techniques in reducing your risk of further injury as well. So uh, what, what else you got? 
Adrian. Another great benefit of this program is that we do everything virtually. So you can get your virtual health coaching and your virtual personal training so that you can do it from home, from your couch, you know. <laughs> Don't have <laughs> to go anywhere. <laughs> Don't have to go anywhere for sure. Yeah, motivate. We uh, that leads into motivational motivation and accountability. So you know, we uh, provide personal one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, motivation and support, and uh, regular with regular check-ins, and we pro we track your progress and uh, set you up with goals and make sure that you're you're on track and making the progress that you need to make in order to go forward. And a key part of this is that it's holistic too. So there's a difference between going to our doctors or our orthopedic surgeons and you know getting news that we're going to get a surgery and then just kind of like prepping in terms of having some meals made or um, people to kind of help out. But what you really want is to have this combined dietary part and this personal training part along with your doctor so that you have all three on your team. And by doing this, Clients can have better posture, they can lose weight, reduce inflammation and pain, have increased strength and overall well-being. So you are like hitting the ground running. Well, so you're prepping, you get the surgery, and then you're done and you have support to just get on with the rest of your life. So right. I think it's a great program. <laughs> I do too. And it's only $14.97 for the whole 90-day program. And it includes one-on-one -on -one support with your nutrition coach and also your personal trainer. You'll get nine sessions total. And we are here to help you thrive. Yes, we are.